Richard Tice. Thank you, Madam Deputy yeah. Speaker. I think uh, it's very important to have a debate on this motion because we've heard all afternoon, haven't we? Splendid speeches, maiden speeches, but the thrust of this afternoon has been scrutiny, accountability, responsibility. And it seems interesting to me that the other House has a committee to scrutinise our relations with the European Union. Indeed, proudly today, they've just announced that they've been reformed. And yet, the government wants to reform the relationship of the House of Lords. And it seems to me extraordinary. We could have a situation, Madam Deputy Speaker, where there's a committee to scrutinise relations with the European Union in the other place, but the importance of scrutiny, indeed, this of all of the 27 <laughs> committees referred to on the order paper, this is the only committee that has the word scrutiny. And having been talking about scrutiny all afternoon, it's the one committee that the Leader of the House wants to do away with. And I find that quite extraordinary because we've heard from the government before the election, during the election and since the election about the importance of our relations with our friends in the European Union and how <sighs> negotiations may take place on a whole range and raft of important issues. And surely the whole point of our debate about our relationship with the European Union, people will remember, do you remember that slogan? Take back control of our borders, our money and our laws. And this, of course, is the place where we debate and legislate for laws on behalf of the people. So if we're going to take back control of our laws, then surely those laws, those negotiations proposed by this government on behalf of the people should be scrutinised in detail and earnest, as has been proposed all afternoon with regard to other matters. So I would suggest to the Leader of the House and the government and the whips that we need to reflect on this. And could I urge the Leader of the House, through Madam Deputy Speaker, actually to withdraw this motion, to reflect on it from the sedentary position of our sunbeds over the next month, and then bring it back to the House in September. <laughs> um, so, uh, and that's what I would urge the... Uh, that's what I would urge, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, the, um, yes, I will give way. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for giving way. Those of us who won't be on a sunbed, but yeah. will be yeah. within our constituencies, do recognise the point. He and I will take a very different view as to the benefits of what this government is doing to reset our relationship with Europe, to finally get the trading benefits sorted now that we've left the European Union to sort out the mess left by the last government with the border <coughs> tax. Does he recognise, as I recognise, there is now a lacuna where people may question where this debate will happen and what role parliamentarians may play in it, and perhaps one of the fruitful things is to clarify what's going to happen to the European Statutory Instruments Committee, which seems to have been dissolved yet was looking at the laws that we were transposing into the UK. So there are a number of questions here that may not be for this evening but are for the future of this Parliament. And what he is expressing, he and I might disagree on the outcomes, but we both agree they are important questions and we'd like to understand what will happen next. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Lady for her constructive and positive contribution. The reality is, Mr Speaker, that it's incumbent on us, on behalf of millions of people who believe in democracy in this country, who wanted to take back control, our job is to scrutinise the negotiations that the newly elected government will have in multiple areas yeah. with, uh, the, uh, with Brussels, with the European Union and with European nations. And it seems extraordinary, just extraordinary. I, I'm not sure how millions of people will understand how we take away that ability to look in detail at... I'll, honour, I'll give way to the honourable member. Between the two uh, honourable friends who have spoken, uh, I, pre I, I guess I'm the third way, because I don't agree with either of them. Uh, but uh, I would say this. Uh, he has a significant point. Uh, and I'd say this to the, to the uh, government front bench. 
In the course of the evolution of the uh, relationship with the European Union, which will happen in the next five, ten years, it's very important that they maintain the trust of the British people as to what they're doing. Yeah. And therefore, if this mechanism doesn't exist, I would like the front bench to actually say what mechanism will replace it. Will it be a duty on the part of different select committees to report on their part of it, or will there be some other mechanism which keeps everybody on board uh, on the journey they're taking us on? I thank the Honourable Member for his most helpful contribution because he has reinforced the point. Where is the scrutiny that our citizens rely on all of us to embark and to involve with the government? Because however well intentioned the negotiations of the government are, actually we have a role to play to avoid the unintended consequences. I think it's splendid that the other place has got their own scrutiny committee. And I reinforce, <laughs> I haven't been invited over there, but um, I reinforce the point, which is that this is the House that is democratically elected. We are charged with scrutinising the government's negotiations with partners all around the world. And it is incumbent, I believe, on the Leader of the House, on the government, to have and to continue <coughs> this European Scrutiny Committee that has existed, has done good work, and is surely the best place to continue that focus and that good work. I will give way to the Honourable Member. I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. I served on the European Scrutiny Committee for the entirety of the last Parliament, and actually its work evolved from simply scrutinising those documents that came from the European Union and had direct effect into our law, to taking over much of the functions of the exiting the European Union Select Committee after it was disbanded. So that committee was actually doing critical cross-governmental scrutiny work on things like retained EU law, the negotiations over the Gibraltar border, the continuing operation of the TCA. So actually, as a select committee, it wasn't departmental in its outlook. It was entirely cross-cutting across all of government. I thank the Honourable Member for that most helpful contribution, in a sense reinforcing the value of this committee this focus and this determination to get the laws right for our millions of citizens. And so I therefore just re-urge the Leader of the House, I think this is the time to withdraw this motion, to reflect upon these contributions, and let's come back in September and let's have a debate upon it and find the right way to proceed. But I would, uh, my contribution through, the, uh, through Mr Speaker is that this motion should be withdrawn. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah.